No, it's fine, it just needs to flag this on it. That's it, just uh, set live up. Tradition. Hello, hello, and welcome to the GLS TV. And my name's Sai Leslie. I'm Gordon Bond. Good evening. So, folks, uh, let's hope you can hear us all right tonight because we're running about, we get caught in my traffic here, so we're just setting up the very last seconds here. And um, we're just going to put the chat on in a wee minute. There was a last minute uh, studio inspection for the waterlog for the for the rain the last couple of days. I've, just like, I've been in our just like tomorrow we'll Aye. get to. I've been in our both all day, so roughly just got here about three minutes ago, so that's why we're late. So apologies if you're you're watching and you're wondering where we were. Um, what I'll say is, guys, if you could help us out with the likes and the shares, that'd be great. As many shares as possible. Whether you're watching on whatever social media platform, we're on Twitter, Twitter, Facebook, Facebook, Facebook YouTube. group, my page. YouTube and we're over the place. We're everywhere, anywhere. Should it be TikTok to watch out for that? Aye, so I'm just going to bring the screen down the wee second so we can see it. So if you could just give us a thumbs up so we know that you're watching. Um, Stuart's helping us out tonight. Stuart, can you stick it on the chat for us just on the on the, the right hand side? Certainly. That tells us sure. if people are in. Brilliant, right. So uh, hi Mark, hope you're well. Always good to have your support. And it's, your it's a new time because we announced a couple of weeks ago just due to the fact that we've got the summer in now. And people get home from work and they want to get their dinner. Yeah, so from now on, obviously we're a few minutes uh, past eight tonight, but we're back, back to the old regular time slot of eight o'clock. So quite a lot to uh, get through uh, tonight. Obviously, I hope everyone's uh, calmed down and uh, I think I must have had about three heart attacks on Sunday, if not more. It was extraordinary. Uh, so we'll talk about obviously the great place to just kick off tonight is obviously the big game on Sunday, old firm games. So, uh, Obviously, we all know the result. Obviously, we all know the result. But we'll just maybe just start from the start. And uh, were you surprised, Sai, at uh, the team selection? Yeah, well, I done a video after the game, Gordy, and the first thing I said was, if you're going to give the manager credit when he does well, you also have to criticise him when he gets it wrong. For some bizarre reason, the last four Rangers managers have picked Scott Wright to start no firm games. I don't understand that. I really don't. I think it's an incredible decision that he made. Um, I'm a fan of Philip Clement. But he got it wrong and he got it wrong big time. Um, I was a, a bit annoyed as well, the fact that he wasn't even, he didn't even, he done the Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, he, he, he went the whole 45 minutes without admitting his mistake. 
And that 45 minutes could have cost us the season as far as the league is concerned because Celtic were all over us for the start. They played really well and we were in absolute shambles, especially in defence. But apart from Sterling at that point, nobody in the team was shining. Yeah, I mean, the we'll, we'll, we'll just take probably just to analyse it properly. We'll take it in di- take it in different stages. So, uh, my my own personal thoughts on the team selection was a lot. But when I seen uh, the, the, the kind of front three of uh, Silver, Wright, and Dessels, I was a little bit worried at the start of the game. To be perfectly honest, because uh, you know, not, not without being unkind to anyone, I was very surprised to see Scott Wright in the team to to start off with. Uh, for, it was, for me, it was quite a strange decision. When you've had you know Matondo coming on against Hibson scoring an absolute screamer, eh, against Hibson playing well and he's got a really good he's, he's, he's a lot faster than Scott Wright as well, eh, so yeah we were a bit surprised at that to say the least and then eh, game kicks off and then within what 21, 22 seconds. Aye. well just be, just before you mention that as well, you've also got the fact that eh, you mentioned all the strikers are ready and fit and then there's no inclusion at all. Kima Roof. Yeah. So that's a bit, you know, I mean, that was a bit confusing, but you're right, the game starts, and before you've got a chance to put your arse on the chair, Celtic's 1-0 up. Yeah. Like what was a, a for, for the angle, I was at God, Derek, because you might have seen it different. In the main stand, it just looked like, um, is it, I don't can, can remember his name, Hattie, his name or whatever. Hattie. Hattie, the Celtic player had just volleyed it in, and it was all because uh, uh, Tavernier was too slow, but when you actually see it on the television, where you can see that angle for where I was, Tavenier kicks the ball off him. And I don't know where the keeper is, but it's Tavenier's fault. First of all, I wouldn't blame the goalkeeper, I wouldn't blame Butlin for it, but Butlin's positioning was terrible. And afterwards, he was a nervous wreck. It was, a, it was such an odd, strange... I mean, I said, I was talking to the game, I was talking to, I was talking to someone before the game, and uh, I said that sometimes these games are decided on a bit of, bit of luck, a bit of misfortune, red card, penalty, which we'll get to all these. All, all, all these things happened, actually, apart from the red card, but... Uh, for me personally, you know, it, it was it was such a windy game. I actually genuinely thought there was a kind of gust of wind that that made Tav misjudge the kind of flight of the ball, the bounce of the ball. It was very odd because you seen you, you seen the Celtic player closing down Tav, and Tav seemed to like not look around him. He didn't seem to understand. He's he didn't have any like positional uh, ah, s- s- situational awareness, and uh, it was it was it was just just like he was expecting a kind of normal start to the game. He was quite nonchalant about it. The wind kind of picked up. Butland was slightly out of position. Uh, but after 21, 22 seconds, you don't really expect your keeper to be in position. No, but that's right. It's also, with the, the, the speed of the ball. See the speed of the ball, because well, it was a deflection. Well, that's what I'm saying. So it, it took, I think Tav, it looked to me, and those kind of, obviously it's a split second, you, you get to see it again, look, look back on it. And it does, I don't care what anybody says, especially with VAR, it does look slightly different when you see it back in slow motion. But definitely looked like there was there was something about the, the wind or something about the ball. I think Tav, he was too slow and not aware that the Celtic player was behind him anyway. And uh, he just seemed to not, not react properly. And he, he seemed to panic. I would, and, I, and, I, and, I, after and watching it back in time, I would say it was a freak goal. But it was yeah, bad, it was, it was bad yeah, defending. It, it, it looked, it, at the time, it looked as if Tav had missed the clearance and the Celtic player balled at the bottom corner. Yep. But it doesn't seem like that on the television. When you watching the television, it was totally different. And yeah. that's why I say that in my after match that I might get something wrong because I couldn't get the highlights. And what I'd seen, I wasn't expecting it, but first of all, because the game had started so quick. So that means that Rangers' game plans are now at the windy. But you need professionalism. And when you're starting with the wrong team and you go down 1 0 within 30 seconds, what, less than a not, minute. Less, less, less than 30 seconds, sorry. Yep. It, was, it was almost, it was like literally. I think 28 seconds, either 20, 23 or 28 seconds. So, so when that happens, what hap- with, with, and with the conditions obviously as well, and the, the multitude of the game, plus the fact that there's only home fans there, all of a sudden it's pressure on Rangers, and Celtic hit us with, with all sorts of pressure, and we didn't, look like, we didn't know how to cope. Didn't know how to cope, and uh, we seen that, I mean, that goal, uh, we've just looked, after that goal for the next 10 to 15 minutes, you know, for the first, the whole of the first half really, but especially for that kind of 10 to 15 minutes, we didn't string a pass together, I think it was, uh, I, I don't remember seeing a shot and goal for Rangers until about 35, 40 minutes. I could be wrong on that, if I am, I hold my hands up on that. But I would say Rangers' first uh, shot and goal in the first half is in 44 minutes, silver. Uh, yeah, was it that, was that long? We, no. for some reason, we, we didn't, for so, and again, I kept saying this throughout the game to my mate and the people around me, that we, we started to play all these long high balls, 
And it was the first time this season I've ever seen that done, getting done. It was panic football. And it was the biggest wind, the, 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 the biggest wind you can imagine. 50, 50 mile per hour, 60 mile per hour. Gusts so, of wind. A couple of and things. we are starting to play long balls. It doesn't, doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So a couple of things right away. Rangers win the toss. Why did we no pick to, to, fight, to, to shoot the other way? But that, again, That's crazy. That, that, was, that, was, that, was a, that was a thought that crossed my mind as well. Why not just start off with the wind at your back? To try and get the, the, the result. Um, and start off as the right team because I honestly think the manager made a major boo boo. It's hardly been commented on. Um, it's like he's getting a free game for it, to be fair. He, he, he did turn it around the second half. We'll there, talk was, about that. there was some criticism on social media and some of the phone lines after the game. To be fair, I've seen uh, and I, and I, I, I thought it was quite little because for other managers, yeah. wouldn't get away with that. I, I think if Rangers had lost the game, you know, they'd a lot, lot more. Uh, but we'll just, as I say, we'll get to kind of overall thoughts. So uh, next. So the next thing is you get a Celtic, uh, I can't remember if it was a cross or a corner, it's all about a head to be honest, and then it takes a deflection, hits off Goldson's elbow in the end, and it's a, a VAR awarded penalty. Yeah, so first of all, Celtic had already set the narrative, the penalty Rangers, so they were always going to get the penalty. I think the last time Rangers get a penalty at Celtic Park in the league was 23 years ago, so you can make your own opinion up on that. However, it was a penalty in my opinion. The reason it was a penalty is because of the new rules, and the new rules state it's a penalty. So VAR got it right, um, but at the time I didn't see it. Again, I wouldn't mean it on, it was so quick, but I didn't see it at the time. But when I look back, you can't really go against the, the... That's the rules of the game, and I don't agree with the rules. Clement didn't agree with the rules after the game he said that. Um, but I think it's a penalty, Gordy. Yeah, so all of a sudden, we were still the first half. 25, 30 minutes in, we're 2-0 down. And... Uh, it turns out that we've got a big, big mountain to climb. So, I've got a wee message in here, but I've not got my specs on, so I can just see a blank screen. I can't see what talk about this is. I've just, can you see that? No. No. Doesn't matter, just leave it. Um, so, uh, so, that was that. But there, at this point, Celtic could have punished us because every time, there was, there was a, a, a point for about 10 minutes where every time the ball went back to Buckland, the whole crowd just kind of stopped breathing. They just held their breath on. Yeah, I mean, there was a chance, again, uh, the Tav, you know, we've said this, and to be fair, we've kind of been full of praise for Tav for the last six months, uh, so we need to give him the criticism, we need to give all the players the criticism for the first 45 minutes, but again, he, get caught, he gets caught out, and uh, I actually thought it was going to be 3-0, because it was a great, great chance for, uh, it was either Maeda or Hitati, I can't remember, one of the yeah. other two, I put it honest, and uh, he, he actually did, what, he actually tried to do what, what Matondo did, in the last minute, but he couldn't quite get it right. But on makes a save. It looks like it looks like a great save at the time from where I was sitting. But on the telly, it was actually a bit of a rubbish effort to be fair. But but on makes a save. It, if it was three 0 at that point, which it was a a, a sitter basically, you didn't admit that. Aye, that would have finished. Over, I think it would have finished. Us it could have possibly been legal over. To be honest, I, the whole all the section, my section, I don't know about yours. We were all shouting 30, 35 minutes. Make the change. Make the change. Silver, what Silver was going down like a. He was getting shot, uh, which I was, you know, quite embarrassed. Really, to be perfectly honest, uh, you know, and it was we, were, just, we, were, we were playing. We couldn't pass the ball. We were giving the ball away. We were playing long, hopeless balls up to Dessers. We played no leaders. Uh, aye, so we just we looked like, and to be fair, uh, it's it's transpired. So it transpires that at half time, the managers went at the dressing room and basically said to the team. We don't reckon, I don't recognise uh, this team. But I'm going to rewind it a wee bit there because I think we should diagnose it a wee bit more as well. Um, a couple of things on it. Well, I wonder because uh, Southgate was there, wasn't he? Yeah. Which he's there. I wonder if uh, Butland felt under more pressure. I don't know. Butland didn't see myself for the first half hour of the game. Uh, it's not the Jack Butland that we know. Rangers had no leadership. Tavernier was getting horsed on the left wing. He, 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 the whole game, in fact, he got horsed on that left wing. Celtic were at the races, we weren't they? But it was an incident I wanted to talk about, God. There was, the, there was a couple of things. I don't think the, the referee had the, the worst of games, and I, I don't like VAR, as you know. However, at the start of the game, the first 10 minutes, I think it was, Carter Vickers walks over, Rangers are about to take a free, a free kick. He walks over in front of John Beaton, kicks the ball yeah, away. That's, that, an, that's that, an automatic booting. That, that was in the first 10 minutes, and we were going... Everywhere around me, you're right to call that out. We were going, at, we were absolutely livid because it was a promising counter attack, and it was, yep. you're right, it was right in front of the referee. So that's a booking. So There's no that, that isn't any uh, judgment uh, or anything uh, else uh, on the laws of the game. That's a booking. Yeah. Ten and minutes he, later, he booked book, book somebody for it. He, he booked somebody he for it later on in the game so as well. Ten minutes later, he then gets a booking for a, a terrible tackle. At this point, he should be off the park. 
So with the Celtic media machine that's been in full force all week, um, are looking for reasons that they didn't win the game. They were lucky to have, uh, at this point they were cruising, but they should have been down to 10 men. And John Beaton bottled it completely, because there's no doubt about it, that's a sending off to two yellow cards are off the park, and he didn't do it. Later on, Alistair Johnson, second yellow card for the penalty, and he doesn't give it. So I don't yeah. think the referee's biased either way, but if you're going to tell us that the decision's all went for Celtic, you're talking absolute Aye, absolutely. nonsense. I think, I, think, I, te I think there's actually a rule of VAR. We'll get to this in a minute, so that's what I want to try and, we'll just try and do it in chronological order. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, we'll be jumping over because it was such a first, it was one of those games. That's probably the, the first place. half covered, isn't it? Yeah, so half time, and you know, honestly, Si, did you see, truth, truth, truth be told, to now, did you see any way back in the second half? At uh, half time, I thought Celtic were going to come out the second half and annihilate us, if I'm being honest. I hate saying that. I didn't see what was going to happen. And I was thinking to myself and the guys around me were saying, it'll be a miracle if he could pull this back. It'll be an absolute miracle. But all credit when due. Yeah, so we go out the second half, obviously, Seymour comes on, gives the crowd a bit of a lift. It gives, obviously, a bit of a lift. I think we, we started to play the second half reasonably better. Uh, I still think we were, we were giving the ball away far too much, and I still think that uh, we, we still looked a bit panicky and a bit. Uh, we were desperate for a goal. A bit desperate. Uh, so but they looked as if they, had, they looked, they looked g'd up. Yep. Silver kept going for all these kind of theatrics in the first half. He kept going, and uh, he cuts into the box. He gets the challenge for Arthur Johnston. The initial decision is uh, free kick. Free kick and a yellow card for diving. Yep. John Beaton then goes through two. Uh, the VAR gets a penalty. What's your thoughts on that, side? Si? Well, it was a penalty. I thought, at first, I was angry because I think um, Fabio Silver does himself no favours by the way. I thought he was going to do enough for easy. There was times he was kicked or whatever, but he was going to do as if he'd been hit with a missile and the way he was clutching his face and stuff like that. So that doesn't do you any favours when it comes to a 50-50 decision when the narrative, as I said, has already been set. Rangers are not going to get many decisions, so you, you really have to be staying on your feet at all times. However, when you look back on it, it was a penalty kick, there's no doubt about it. The two penalties are penalties, and I'm thinking to myself here, Gordy, Tavernier's missed the last two penalties. If he misses this after that mistake, he's getting hell, especially yeah. being the captain. Again, and that takes real balls to go up and put them yeah, on the pole. You, you hate to say it because we're talking about the home game, but again, we've always told the truth in this show. Yeah, I did. I did exact same thoughts. I was, I was still pretty confident. I know that Tav scores. I think Tav's success rate is about eighty percent, which is actually pretty good. So eighty percent success rate is actually very good. So eighty percent success rate is a uh, very good for a penalty taker. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, uh, you know, he, he steps up and he, it's a great. It was a great penalty. To be fair, I, I absolutely I'm fantastic. It was unsavable. Yeah. Our game is due. So. When you criticise players and then they come and they do things like that, Butland's great saves and Tavernier's ability to get that to, to, to have the bottle to do it, great penalty, it brings Rangers back in the game. Yeah. A doubt. At this point I'm thinking, Absolutely. holy shit, yeah. we, we, we and actually it's still only, you know, a miracle only, here. You know, it's still just early in the second half and uh, again, it seems like a couple of minutes, just a couple of minutes later, uh, we, we seem to have won the ball in the middle of the park. Uh, we got the park, it takes us a couple of bits of attack and play, uh, and then uh, Dessels puts the ball on the back of the net and again criticising Dessels all you like but he's in the right place at the right time and what he thinks was a goal then uh, obviously Beaton goes over the referee goes over to the uh, VAR and then chops the goal up but what really 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 annoyed me was that when he came out for the v when he came out for the, the screen he pointed at the centre circle as if I know, it was a I know, goal. I know and the, every, for, for like a so few that made, second row went up yeah so he, 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 he looked back he honestly pointed to the centre circle and we all said it was a goal and uh, then within like and then it was just like that kind of like you know it seemed like an age but it was obviously just a few seconds where uh, confusion the confusion reigned and that, that is that's the best fault for that I mean you can't I mean you, you could give people you end up you could make people unwell so looking back what it was, I mean it's a ridiculous decision I've not I mean, a couple of things. Uh, so just getting back to the Alistair Johnston thing, as I said, the reason why I didn't get a yellow card, now, don't shoot the messenger here, but it's, it's you know, some media establishments have trotted out a line 
that you don't have to have a, the, a, a the booking v, for the, the VAR uh, doesn't give bookings, it only gives red cards uh, or rescinds or rescinds red cards. However, I am sure that I've seen yellow cards given after VAR decisions. Well, it's got to be that. That's like saying that. So if there was a VR and you, you realised that there was a handball when he punched the goalkeeper, they wouldn't be sent off. That wouldn't no, make sense. But, no, he can be, they can be sent off apparently, but, but they can't get a yellow. They can't get a yellow. Yeah, I don't, I don't I, think I, that's a rule. I, well, I know you're saying that. I've heard people saying that. That, that, that's, that's what's been said, and whether that's true or not. But then it just it just goes to show how crazy it is, where no one's actually sure of the rules. That's the I problem. Imagine that. And, and I also, also believe, sorry, that, that the rules in Scotland and the rules in England and the rules in Europe are now all so different with the VAR. So that causes confusion when, when referees and pundits are making an opinion on it. Yeah, and you don't you, you don't necessarily always have to give a, a yellow card for a foul on the box, which people have said as well. But I don't I don't understand why there seems to be this clamour to make up excuses for other teams' players not to get sent off. Uh, when you see, see the media reaction to Rangers penalties and stuff, etc., it's ridiculous. And then uh, all the media, BBC, the phone ends, they're all, all these so called uh, journalists, they're, 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 they're queuing up basically to say that, oh, Arthur Johnson shouldn't be sent off. But that is two games in a row, he's been lucky to stay on the park. And two games two, two games in a row where whether you think it's a penalty or not, it's a penalty. That is che- cheating. So. And yeah. cheating's going on, cheating's going on unpunished. But well, just just when you're saying that, let's not forget also that that's four old firm games in a row that Rangers have had a, a perfectly legit goal called off the Morelos goal at Celtic Park last season, which basically gave Celtic the match. Uh, nothing wrong with that. They said Morelos made a foul when he got fouled. The first game of the season, old firm game at Ibrox, uh, the roof goal. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. The referees again in VAR called it wrong. The handball incident, well, we'll still know the explanation at Celtic Park and the free kick that should never have been. And the reason for that is it's uh, the same phase of play when they can bring it back. It wasn't the same phase of play. Rangers attacked and the ball deflected and came out and it was a new phase of play. So for the last four Old Firm games, Rangers have had four game, four match-winning goals or four match-winning incidents that have affected us. Yeah. I mean, I, I find, I mean, the, 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 general, the general feeling at that point, I mean, we... we we thought we'd equal just a few minutes after getting the first goal back. And see, to be honest, if, if, we, that, if that goal had stood... We would have won the game. There was, uh, there was no doubt in my mind that we were going to want to win that, but then... We would have won what, it comfortably, what, and that would, have been, that would have been crazy, but we would have won yeah, that comfortably. What, what, what seems to happen, at I, especially at Ivory, and especially in big games, when any sort of decision goes against Rangers, the heads go down for a few minutes, the heads, the heads go down... And, and you and felt they, it in the stands as yeah, well. Yeah, and the, the, it, the heads seem to go down again for another few minutes, and then... Fair play to the manager, he makes another couple of changes. Uh, he takes off so, Joe Manzi. So, so when you're saying that, I think we should acknowledge that Seema's substitution was the right one as well. Yep. Because that, so, that changes if yep. you say And he, he brings on, you know, he, he takes off Dio Mandy, uh, he brings on, uh, he, he obviously brings on uh, Kieran Dull, which was a bit of a surprise actually as well. I thought that was the wrong uh, move, and but takes, credit went too because when yep. you're. And uh, fair, play, fair, uh, fair play to him for that. So he uh, can't lose one and did well. And then we get the equaliser. And then uh, again, total slug in the tail. A couple of minutes after the equaliser goes in, Celtic score. Celtic score, and again, it's it's horrific defending. The, the ball shouldn't be allowed to come in the it's box. Bad concentration, horrific defending, yeah. terrible like, positioning it's, play. It, it's, 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 it's concentration, and the concentration goes down to mentality as well. It's almost as if we got the equaliser, so that was it. The game was the game was done for the Rangers players at that point because. There's, there's, the, the ball goes out of play, there's, there's no reason for the ball to come out of the box in the first place. Well, I, I'll be honest, I thought it was done as well. And there was I, two, I was... And there was, I think there was two Rangers defenders, and it's not even a great shot, it goes, it goes under, as far as I remember, and again, I will go back to saying this, it is still a bit of a haze, to be honest, the game, but it seems it seems to go under Butland, and uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a great goal. Fair play, to this, fair play, I mean, it's, it's one of these goals that if you're, if you're a striker, you take it and you'll score it. The fact but that they scored so quickly, I, I, as much as I grudgingly admire it, because you're thinking they, they just stung us. It was a, a stinger. Yeah. Punch. And again, uh, the, uh, the sting, the sting, the tail, it kind of, you know, deflates a little bit. Ibrox kind of loses a bit of its cauldron atmosphere. I thought it was no way back. But then, fair, ah, so did I. I mean, at that point, you get, you get, you get 2-1, then you get, you get, you get the equaliser, but you, and then it's chopped off. Then you get the next equaliser, and then within a minute or two minutes at the most, Celtic take the lead again. But then fair play, uh, we kept Matondo comes on, 
Uh, he does well. I mean, he, I don't think he did particularly. He did, did okay. I don't think he did particularly great up to that point. But he gets the ball, cuts inside, and it's an unstoppable finish. finish to the to the, the top corner. So absolutely an amazing. Finish. A wee shout out to yeah. Lewis that used to help us out in the channel because she's been crying out for that for two years. <laughs> Lewis, it's finally came true. Um, no, for a long time, Lewis was saying that he he's got it in his locker. The the lad that he was on Talk Sport, and. Tondo actually said he'd been practicing it and the manager encouraged him to do it. I mean, as soon as he's got that ball, you know where it's going. Johnston, that the Celtic player, actually brings his head away from it. He, he shits himself. I don't know why, but that helps it go in because the angle means that the, the goalkeeper's no chance of seeing it. What a finish. And he's done it before. Yeah. That's not a, a first Yeah, he's done it the week before against Hibs. And, uh, you know, it's an absolute, f again, it's a phonetic finish. And then, everyone seems to have forgot this, but just in the dying seconds, Jesus has a, it's a, it's a, it's a short. He's a, he's, he's a 25, 25 yard effort, and it's not, it's not that far away. Oh, it was held. Oh, <laughs> and then I the thought we'd have won it because that would have been some victory for us. Um, so my, my thoughts on the game, Gordy, and I'll give you my mind, and you can give me yours. Yep. Um, obviously, the first half Rangers won the races. We picked the wrong team, and we, we basically had the wrong attitude. The wind going against us maybe didn't help, but no excuses. Celtic were. Outstanding Rangers were awful and they had a chance of finishing us off in the first half. Second half, if I'm looking at it, so a couple of comparisons. If you look at it as a game of two halves, Celtic won the first game 2-0, the first half 2-0, and we won the second half 3-1, if you want to look at it that way. Also, you can look, I'm trying to look at the positives in this, because if you look at the negatives, that Rangers team in the first half going to Celtic Park to win the league, if we need to win there, no draw, win. Um, we wouldn't win that first. We wouldn't win anything that first half. The way we played with the, the crowd against them, and if they needed a draw, the arse would go as well. But if we're talking about the second half, Rangers win at three-one. So you would have to say at this point that uh, you can call in a wee minute, Stevie. So uh, if you're looking at the second half, I would say first of all, there's a few positives in this, Gordy. First of all, can Rangers go to Celtic Park and win? Way the second half display, yes. Sterling doesn't normally play in that position. Red Van's back and Sterling goes into the middle of the park. He was man of the match, right? That's a positive. Another positive for us, we, we, could, we could have possibly Danilio and Ryan Jack back for the old firm at Celtic Park. And we're looking just now at, in my opinion, for the rest of the season, hopefully, Matondo on the left, Sima on the right, and Dessers ran his arse off. He, he, he tried. It was a hard game for him. But there's a lot less pressure on him with the two aim and the two wings. And all, all of a sudden, we can't be on the team as well. Rangers look dangerous, and I think we could actually yeah. we could actually be on to something good here. That's the positives. Aye, uh, that's fine. That's only the YouTube channel. It's fine. It's still carrying on. It's fine, mate. So, uh, my thoughts overall. I thought first half a lot. I, I, I said at half time. I think I messaged you actually. Say to say I've done even under Cabello and Kachina and uh, everyone else. I don't think I've seen a worst. The only kind of first half performance that I remember is when we get beat 4 0 at Hamden about seven or eight years ago in the semi final. I, no, that, I would agree that, with that. I was that, shocked. I was genuinely shocked. Fair enough, second half, but I, 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 it pains me to say this, and I'll probably get papers for it. And you know, if that, that's the case, that's the case. But for some of these players, I don't think I don't think they I don't think they can beat. I, I don't think they think they can beat Celtic. I know, I agree with that. Stuart, see you on the right hand side of the corner, but it says YouTube. We just flick that, didn't we? On the right hand side of the black screen. If I get down to one of the other channels, you'll see it. I agree with you, Gordon. This is a, a concern for me. However, I'm flipping it to you as well because we hate to be positive here. Some, at some points, I'm thinking to myself, some of these guys were real winners here to come back and get that three each. Uh, the passion that they had in them. Um, but there, there's players there, I wonder sometimes, have they got the ability to, to mentally win the games? We don't no. have any Richard Goffs, John Browns, Terry Hurlocks, Terry Butchers. You could go through all these guys over the years, and did, did I say it? Um, even when with Morelis in the team, you'd have a bit of fight and dig. Sometimes we don't have that, and that's what's concerning me. You know, yeah. I love to have in here, but I think Rangers might have to make a. This is controversial, right? I think Clermont might have to make a decision in the next Old Firm game to drop. Well, Tavernier and Goldson. I was thinking that the way over to uh, maybe put Sterling on the right, right back and. Well, you could play three at the back, or you could do... I'm thinking different ways of doing it. You could play Balligan, possibly, who has had a, a few good games against them. But whatever he does, right now, on the right, uh, the left hand, the left wing, against uh, Tavernier, Tavernier looked lost. He was good up front, but 
Tavernier has never. I know for him games, Tavernier has never been the same since game base link up. I've I've said I've said this I've said I've said virtually the same thing for the last uh, two or three years watching no form games. Both wings, Celtic know how to beat Rangers. You see the problem that's normally we've got no form games is that unfortunately Celtic know how Celtic for the most part know what how to beat us and it doesn't always work for them. But they know if they get the ball out in the wings and they, they, they cut and they cut out, they cut in, they they, they, they close the the Rangers pull backs down, they'll get a ball into the box and usually as I don't think Kyogo scored this weekend, but Usually Kyogo puts the ball away. He's got the ability to put or the ball in the net, we, I agree. Or, and, and it's the same time as well, in these big, these big old firm games, we always make, we always gift them a goal. Yeah, and we, that's, we, that's we been gift, happening we, for... We gift them, a, gift them a goal, you know, going back, you know, maybe five or six years. Well, uh, what you're going to see is, what is, I'm going to throw it back to you as well, right? See, since Gerrard, too many Rangers managers gave them far too much respect. Um, Beal yeah. was a classic example. When, when he tried to defend the, the lead when he, his first old firm game, uh, Gio kept doing it. This seems to happen with the Rangers managers and Clement done it. They, they're, they're gaining Celtic far too much respect and changing their game plan for Celtic. And Celtic could have won that game. But the argument is, Gordon, when you're saying that if the Rangers players get the bottle, then you could argue if the Celtic players get the bottle because they're 2 0 yeah. up at Ibrox. Ibrox is, is booing the team off at half time, the Rangers support. And yeah, it's, it's, we it's, score four goals. I mean, we should have won the game. It's crazy. So there's always an argument either way. Yeah. And yeah, you can, so you came out of it thinking to yourself, do you know what? Didn't show up. Didn't show up in the first half. It was just clear for everyone to see. But then you know we come away. You know whether or not it's uh, you know I don't know if it's you know if it, if we are the moral victor. I mean, Philip come on, come on, the big thing about it. And I think that's his job at the end of the day. It's his job to see the positives and get the fans g'd up. So uh, no problem with that whatsoever. Uh, you like it that you go. So. Celtic might be pleased coming to Ibrox and going away with a draw and overall and then Rangers would be pleased coming back if you 2-0 down and get, getting the draw in the end and still being, you know but it's crazy that the league title is still in both clubs' hands Aye, because I, cause I know that uh, Celtic made a big point and then Rangers made a big point so back to you, Gordy what do you think? Who got the better result? <sighs> On paper if you, t- if, you, if you look at it if you look at it eh uh, you know, with no compa- with no passion and you know, cold light of day, Celtic going to Ibrox getting a draw is a better result. Ah, yeah, I would, paper, I would that, agree with that. that is overall, at half time, 2 0 down. However, uh, the nuance of it is that Rangers probably psychologically, you know, maybe shave it, you know, 50, 55% to 45%. Is it? It's, it's a very, very fine margin. Celtic will, at, at the time, Straight away after the game, Celtic probably got it. They, they gave, gave away that, that equaliser. But in the cold light of day, eh, they'll probably be pretty pleased with the result. But eh, they lost the goal in the last minute of the game. We'll be, you know, after the game, we'll probably be euphoric at getting the draw, or, or very happy at getting the draw. But when, when we analyse it, we, we, we probably worry a lot about the fact that we collapsed in the first half. We're also at the point now, we're, we're at the end of the season, we're almost at the end of the season, sorry, but we're at... This is where it matters. Any slip-ups now could effectively cause either team the, the, the league. Now, Celtic brought back McGregor, but Rangers brought back Seema. Well, last week they brought him back, but they got Seema back and they got Matondo back I mean, and possible other players. So yeah, who's I mean, going to be the stronger now? Well, we've... St- I mean, we've... We've still got... A, we, we, the reason why we were a little bit disjointed on Sunday as well is the fact that a lot of our teams still aren't fit. We 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 had we had to play we had to play you know Sterling okay we had to play Sterling's not used to playing that position eh, at all Sterling's been a very good player he's played he played all right as well but young eh, Red has been playing really really well in that and position it, that would have allowed Sterling in the midfield yeah and it just goes to show you know how how well we how well Stur- eh, Red has been doing that we can say we actually miss him on, I on agree with that also the I think we should note that most strangers victories against Celtic in the last few years Ryan Jacks played yeah. Because he's he has a character that's not not I hate saying this and I'll get pill off I'll get pill off for it but he's not scared of them again I don't think Lundstrom had a great game on Sunday as a, as a, there's a few Rangers I don't, I don't think Lundstrom had but I don't think he had a good game but there's a there's a few there's a few Rangers players that do for in my opinion only they do seem to go into a bit of a shadow when they play Celtic and I include yep. Goldson in that I include Tab in that and for some, for most of the game on Sunday apart from little flashes. I could link one stream on that. So that's I the point I'm making. We I, might I, have I, to. That's the spine of the team. We might have to make that big decision of doing something. If you remember back a few, uh, well, more than a few years back now, but um, when Amaruso was the captain of the Rangers, 
and uh, Advocat dropped him, his captaincy, and gave it to Barry Ferguson, right? Uh, Barry Ferguson got dropped famously as well. Sometimes managers need to make a big call in big games. Now, it's not really heard of with Rangers dropping the captain from the team altogether, but I think Rangers might have to drop Tavenier for the next Old Firm game. What we'll do is we're going to go to the comments in a minute, guys. That's your call. Uh, this is your opinion on everything so far. What we'll do is, we'll, if the Stuart can universe the, the chat up a wee bit, mate, so we can have a look at it. We'll let you know your opinions on it and we'll update you on the scores as well in the Champions League. Uh, so, I just some comments that come in just saying that we were shocking. I think that first half, I think I did agree we were shocking. Uh, I don't know. It's one of those games where I, I, didn't think, I didn't think the quality was very good uh, at all for both teams, to be honest. It could, could have been the conditions as well. And by the way, I must say something quickly. Nothing to do with the match, but what a display for the Union Bells. I thought that was brilliant to see with the, the flag display and then the, the TIFO and, the, and the, the, the various parts of the TIFO that they'd done the smoke and that. I thought it was outstanding. I thought that the players would have been then up for it. That's what surprised me that they weren't up for it, but it was a short goal. Is there any comments here you want to comment on? They're going quite quick. Uh, uh, Mark can say Celtic might have the upper hand in the last low firm game while they're at home and there's no away fans so I would, I would agree they'll have the upper hand it could be a, if there's any slip-ups before then it could be out of Celtic's hands there but I wouldn't like to go to Celtic Park with Rangers leading a draw Well, being enough I wouldn't like to see that Rangers, Celtic have kept the eye twice this season they get four points we, does anyone think we are, have we, we, we I mean, we realistically, we've always got a chance when of course we have. Uh, you know, and I'll support us to the death, and uh, I hope we do. I just, uh, I just don't really. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure that not some some of these players, like the spine of the team, have, have got the co they've got, they've got the mental confidence to go to Park and Park and get the win. I hope I'm wrong. We and don't. We uh, really, it's one of the ones that we I don't know. Hope I'm wrong, but just fixing my mic. Is there a problem, man? In the mics, can you let us know? It shouldn't be because it's right beside my face. Um. So that's your opinions on it, guys. You can let us know. And if you want to give us a quick call for the next 20 minutes, it's 0141 319 And if you leave your last three digits, then we know who you are. We'll then be able to take your call. If you don't leave your last three digits, you're on to plums. And the line's open? They should be open, aye. Okay, good. Aye. Okay. It's all turned on, so I'm just waiting that came in. So, uh, basically, none of us are any of the wiser for the league title. Uh, where it's going to end up after that because it's as you were basically. I was uh, shocked because I didn't know if I was happy, sad, upset, angry, annoyed, frustrated. Delighted. I, 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 I actually I still went, don't know. I actually went straight home uh, on Sunday because uh, I, I didn't know. I, I didn't know how. I just had to. I, I didn't know how how to feel. Uh, so it was just a little bit. It was just one of those games where it was just odd. It was just you know, it was weird. It was exciting, don't get me wrong, in the it's end. It's probably a great game for a neutral, but we're no neutrals. Anyway, yeah. the game's over. Um, if anybody wants to give us a wee call, we can get a chat about it. But let's talk about Dundee and the farce that is Scottish football. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, and I'm just saying this, right, to be neutral on it, not neutral, you know, to give a bit of balance here, right? The weather in the last four or five weeks in Scotland has been really, really wet. Uh, Mark, I know nobody can see your number. We'll get, we'll get, just getting a bit of help tonight, mate. It's not that easy. So that's why I'm reading that number. It's 0141 319. <laughs> I've got it now. 0141 319 If you want to give us a wee yeah. call, guys. I can't change it for here. It's just one of these things tonight. Uh, so, also, aye, so, you know, it, it has been, it's been the last four or five weeks in first current of the winter. It has been sodden, right? We can't deny it. It's raining for almost every single day. There's been a lot of rain for the last four or five weeks, so the ground is saturated. Places in England, parts of Scotland are flooding. Uh, so I do have, and, and Dundee are, you know, the richest club in the world, right? That said, fair point. Yep. That said, uh, you know, they should have been playing groundsmen, uh, and if this game is called off tomorrow, there'll be an absolute uproar. Well, I, get, I understand what you're saying. I've been in uh, Dundee all week, as you know, and all last week. First of all, this is, it's made me laugh, but it is true. See, when you get to the roundabout and there's, there's the petrol station in the way out of Dundee, see, just when you pass that, the rain stops, 
Uh, honestly, that was like uh, that I actually, I actually know what train station is. I think there's a Morrison's that as well. I think that knows what you're so saying. On the way down to Perth, it's nice, but it has been bucketing down. However, what I will say is, after Dundee's antics and their behaviour when they gave Celtic a title, they didn't win. And they were obviously paid off when they said that they got the, the email went missing in the, the spam folder and things like that. I've got no sympathy whatsoever for them and most of the other teams in Scottish football who took pleasure in kicking us when we were down. Falkirk, a few years ago, were denied access to the Scottish Premier League because they didn't have stadium facilities that were adequate for promotion. Why are Dundee getting special treatment? Also, as well as that, they've had a, they've had a week to get a, a plan B in place, Gordy, and we're still hearing tonight that it might be a neutral venue. People have bought tickets, they've bought corporate yeah, tickets, well, they're travelling buses. Myself, myself and yourself included, Scott. So, so uh, I, right. there's, a, there's a pitch inspection at 11 o'clock, and... Uh, you know, if that is delayed at all, I mean, people have got people have got to make plans. People are coming from all parts of the country. Uh, why why not have the pitch inspection tonight or you know ten o'clock tonight? Because it's a farce. And what happens if is this going to be? Remember the last time it was a referee, but it was a local referee, and then they overruled him. They yeah. waited because these guys that are running supporters buses. They've got basically a problem here. They've they're running a bus. They need to pay for the bus. Yeah, people I, are taking time I mean, off work. On balance and then I think, the game, I think the game will go ahead, but I don't think, there's going, to, I don't think it's going to be particularly good quality tomorrow night. The pitch is absolutely horrific. Uh, Motherwell, I believe, went to Dundee. I think we'd obviously other plans at the weekend, other games on, but I believe Motherwell went to Dundee and they were 2 0 down in 1 3 2 or 1 0 down in 1 3 1. If I remember, correct me if I'm wrong. It's not going to be good conditions. It's howling up there. The yeah. other thing, credit to Motherwell for this. Motherwell were offered the shit or asked. And tried to pressure them into playing the game on a, a on a, I think it was Airdrie's ground, I can't I remember, but it was an artificial surface anyway. And Motherwell said, No, the game should be played where it is. This is Dundee's problem, it's nobody else's problem. In this day and age, if you want to play with the big boys, you need to be ready for it. I don't have any sympathy for them whatsoever, but this game should be going ahead. And if it doesn't go ahead, then that means that we go another week where we could be top of the league, but because of the, the game in hand, that Celtic will look as if they're top of the league and they've got yeah. advantage. I mean, it's pretty much going to be the mid, well, not the middle of April, right? But you're getting to it. It's, it's a bit, you know, it's a bit silly when you you you're, you're, you can't host a game when it's coming into you know, not maybe not summertime as such, but technically, but if summertime started and we're still looking at water water pitches and uh, it's you know the the wind at the weekend would have dried you know dried up the ground up a little bit, I guess. But at the same time, uh, it's just the, the facilities in Sc Scottish football can look a bit of a joke. I mean. You look at you look at all the hula around the VAR, and you look at the games that get called off at Dundee this season. It's like three or four games called off already. Uh, it's ridiculous. And uh, Livingston the plastic pitch, and Callum with the plastic pitch as well. Uh, it's it's pathetic. Um, I just feel for the fans at this point because um, well I'm I'm going to Dundee anyway, but if anybody's going to travel up there. Ryan's bus, for example, Ryan's bus came all the way from uh, Dunoon yeah. and got to the Perth roundabout and never mind Dunoon, done, done back. Yeah, and back that, and that's a lot for supporters clubs, you know, money's a bit tight right now and uh, they probably all paid, you know, 20 quid, at least 20, maybe, coming from Dunoon probably maybe 25, 30 quid each or whatever, and they've got to pay the bus and then you pay it again. That, that has to come out of the supporters club's funds, etc. And uh, it's, it's a lot of... It's a lot of money when you're having to do it. I mean, if it's, if it's also, know. when do they fit the game in if they don't play it? Well, because we've got the cup semi final uh, next week. Aye, and two weeks. apparently, as well, uh, it has to get played before the split. Aye, as well. So, I don't know, you know, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, how it's going to work. So, that's why a neutral venue, I don't agree with a neutral venue, but that make, it makes sense with the way that this league gets run that that's what will happen. Uh, but I mean, uh, is, is that is that what's going to happen uh, if the game? I don't know. Uh, uh, again, no one knows. It's crazy. No one knows what's going to happen. The last people to find out will be the fans. Yeah, and uh, it's the fans. You know, you look at you look at all this. You know, Sky taking off. I mean, look look at some of the English ticket kickoff times. Obviously, they get much more money than Scotland. But you had you know you get kickoff times at like half five, half six on a Saturday and all that, and it's ridiculous. Especially the fans going for you know one end of the country to the other as well. It's it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And I don't think I agree with you. What I would say is I see this at the weekend and I stand by it. See with the with the game being so close, with the no the game, sorry, with the league being so close, I believe that Rangers really need to get the goals up. We're a goal behind Celtic with a game in hand. But this could come down to a helicopter Sunday 
and it's time to get the goals in, and it's not going to be easy tomorrow night with that, with that pitch. Yeah, it's not going to be easy. Uh, and or, or, or sorry, Ross County as well. Yeah, and another thing as well, which people I don't think there's been a lot of talk of, but I think you know, if I'm right, we're going to have we're going to have five away games. Is that right? Yeah, because we've got two coming up. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll have three, probably three. After Celtic Park three. So and then we'll have probably the way the fixtures have went, probably two two games away as well after that. So it uh, looks like we're going to have hard. five. Uh, five away games and uh, that's, uh, that, that's I mean it shouldn't be but I mean it looks like you know Aberdeen and Hibs aren't going to get the top it looks very very likely that Aberdeen and Hibs won't go in the top six so that is uh, two away games spare for we would have to have played Aberdeen away from home and the, the only games that are up for these days is Rangers so that's a Aye. bonus for us it's a bonus definitely uh, Hibs as well uh, we played them at home recently so We'd have had to play them away as well, and I think Hibs, you know, would love nothing better than to 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 ruin it for Rangers uh, as well. So, a bit of, for me, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a bonus uh, that these these have, these these uh, that this has worked out the way it has, and also, uh, but it's going to come down to the Old Firm game, really. That's going to be That's a big a, one because if game. Rangers or Celtic slip up before the Old Firm game then the Old Firm game will be a title decider and they don't want that. I can't see them leaving that to the last game of the season. But Well, it's probably going to, I mean, it, 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 for, it definitely won't be the last game of the season. Uh, I think it's usually, usually now it's the second game the after second, the But that could also the way it's working. Yeah, so we're probably going to, we're going to play uh, Dundee, then Ross County on Sunday, and then what, the Cup weekend after? The Cup weekend after that. First, we so play on the Sunday first, again, Celtic, the, yeah. pre the preferred day of the Saturday, which... Every time Rangers ever play in uh, these fight these semi finals now, we always get the shitty pitch in the next day. Yeah. On the yeah. Sunday. I want to talk about that, Gordy Wells, we're on the subject here the matter. Um news came in the night, um, that was just before we started the show, so I've not read up much on it. But Hart suddenly sold all their tickets after asking for the half of the split basically. It's and they're gonna get a fine now. So now this is going to now come back and bite them in the bum. So hearts are going to now I'd imagine hand the tickets back to Rangers and Rangers are going to get the tickets that they asked for in the first place. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's... It's a Mickey Mouse league. It's and, ridiculous, and it's isn't it? You know, how, many, how, how, many times it ha how many times has it happened that these clubs don't, you know, sell it, uh, sell it the allocation ends up, you know, more tickets on sale? They just say that you get... So, Hearts, how many season ticket holders have Hearts got? 10,000 at the most? So, you say, so. so they get 100% of that. So, any season ticket holder that Hearts has got a right to get you know, even if even if there's only eight thousand, you say right, you can have two tickets each, whatever. That's sixteen thousand tickets. Still fair. We, we, we just get the rest. I mean, the, the late great Jimmy Sanderson. Don't know if you remember him. He might be too young. He started uh, off Super no. Scoreboard, the Radio Clyde Show, and everybody hated him. That was his thing. Everybody just hated the guy. But he was he was a real character. He used to have a, a saying every single week: "We want bums on seats." Now, guys that go to football every week, and then there's guys like the Hearts fans or the, the Celtic fans because Celtic will be selling it all season and the Aberdeen fans that are going to go to these, these semi-finals that don't follow football are going to be turning up in this and we're finding out the Rangers fans are going to initially get denied it. Yeah. That's no bums on seats, that's basically part-timers getting a preferential treatment. Yeah, it's, 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 it's no fair. I think Rangers, should, as a club, should be fighting that more. I mean, you get these teams and there's a semi-final couple of years ago, it wasn't that long ago, I think the total crowd was 11,000 or something, there was two Aye. championship clubs, and fair enough, you know, five and a half thousand fans each for the championship, it's good, but at the end of the day, you, uh, the hand needs to be full, and to go around, the, I mean, I, I, we've done, done it to death, but there should be, it should be proportionate, the, your, your, your average attendance of the season should be taken into account and proportionate, and if... That was one, I'm not laughing, sorry, that, that, that quote, and I can hardly see because I'm not getting the Gregory Peck's on, but that was one of his quotes he used to say, what? Jimmy Sanderson, are you accusing me of mendacity? Uh, he used to, Stuart will remember what I talked about, he used to have great father. Aye. Aye. Duncan. You should have picked Remember Derek Johnson was telling us... You just did not pick some of it up, no? Remember we were talking about when we went to Mull, Derek Aye. Johnson was saying that if he, if, because in the days that they, they, they didn't have the internet and things like that and technology, if he shouted Buncombe, that meant cut him off the show. Uh, <laughs> Buncombe! Uh, Great days, actually. Okay, so, uh, obviously there's a <laughs> lot of... Poppy, uh, Buncombe and Poppycock, that was his two There's a lot of... Uh, big games on tonight in the Champions League. Uh, apart, I think it's Do you two, want to get an update two, on them? Two, 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 one, it's 2-1 Real against... Two, so it's Real Madrid 2, 
Man City 1 and I believe it's Arsenal 1 and Bayern Munich 2 so not a great night so far for the English teams in the Champions League but eh, plenty okay. of football I know eh, this isn't the Rangers related Gordy but I noted that the Bayern Munich fans were banned from the stadium they're not allowed to attend the game uh, and with Celtic obviously denying Rangers, uh, uh, denying their own fans at 800 tickets and then denying Rangers fans to go to Celtic Park, um, obviously uh, fan friendly. This seems, seems to be a common occurrence now where there's no, there's no away fans attending football, it's no good for the game. It's not good for the atmosphere and it's, uh, you know, I don't, I don't agree with it. I don't, you know, had our opinions on it on this show obviously. Uh, I think it's great that there's going to be at least some fans at each stadium next season. Uh, yeah. But I mean, Germans in general, I would say, are mainly well behaved and you usually get a great atmosphere for them. Um, I don't know if Ryan's going to call on the night. I'm just looking to that flash here, no? Uh, no, it's getting a bit. It's nine o'clock now. So. Oh, all right, aye, cool. So we'll get another couple of minutes and we'll close uh, 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 the show. So we'll just, uh, so watch, we'll just have a wee look ahead. So if the game goes, goes ahead tomorrow, uh, who do you start with? Well, I, th- I think it basically starts with the team that finished the game. I think that kind of picks itself. I do agree with what uh, Clement said in the press conference after the game. These days are finished, but it's the same at Sullivan players. Yeah. It's all about a squad. Um, but you pick the right now, Rangers should be forgetting about the injury situation now. We should be looking at playing our best players starting every game because we've got a problem. Our problem seems to be that we, 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 lack, we, we leak silly, silly goals. And Celtic's problem is that they can't play two, the same, they can't play good in two halves. So we need to take advantage of that, get as many goals as we can tomorrow night. On the left wing, Matondo. On the right wing, Seema. And in the middle, Dessers. He's, he's been in, I honestly think he got a lot of unfair flack at the weekend. He was running he about, uh, he's running about. He didn't sorts. get, I mean, he said that there was a lot of high balls that he couldn't win, so it was a bit strange. He didn't, it wasn't his best game. He wasn't, he tried and he got, he, he got what he thought would have been a goal. Uh, I, I would say, like, we, we play, we, I think we play Matondo and uh, I would maybe start with Kieran Dill, actually, and, and Rewal Sullivan for coming on and doing well. I maybe give. I think Dio Mandy has uh, uh, played every game since he signed, so I'd maybe rest him if he's getting a bit heavy. Aye, uh, heavy but but again, but a, he could come on as a sub. Ryan, if you want to give us a wee call the new mate, that would be fantastic. I just seen you. I just noticed you commented that. It'll come up when the boat when the screen will flash and just you just let him come into it. Uh, so Ryan's going to give us a quick call there. Um, again, Gordy, if we win all our games, we win the league. But, 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 we, are, we are in course, right, for a treble. So it's not all bad. Like the first half it was doing gloom in the uh, weekend, right? Six, six, six wins in a draw. We've won the league as well. People forget that. So six uh, wins in a draw. So uh, it's doable. That's what my point is. It's, it's very much doable. Yeah. So, uh, I think we just... Uh, we'll probably do some... We'll probably have a... a you, you, you're going to the game? You're traveling up to the game, yeah? No, I'm going to already be up there. All oh, right, okay. Are you going to the game? To, then I'm going to the game, aye. Good. And then I'm Good. going to, to Northern Ireland on uh, Thursday. Lovely. Okay. Harry Keane scored. Off. That's, yeah. that's ironic. Interesting. Uh, interesting. Let us know if you watch your prediction for tomorrow night, Simon, before we wrap up. Um, well, we might have Ryan phone in the next couple of seconds, but my prediction is that the game won't go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's going to go ahead, to be honest. Um, just because the part's so bad. But if it does go ahead, um, I'd have to predict a Rangers victory, but we need a couple of goals. So 3 0 to Rangers yeah. if the game goes ahead, but I really. I'm very much doubtful. I'm going to be in Dundee in the morning doing a report on the game if it goes ahead or yeah. doesn't go ahead. I'm pretty sure that uh, Dundee, Dundee are looking, you know, actually, you don't know who's going to finish in the top six, but if Dundee finish in the top six, and they'll be one of our home games. Uh, alongside maybe St Mon as well, but I'm going to, I would go for 2 0. It's one of these games where it's going to be bad conditions. It's going to With be, those conditions, 1 0 would be a good uh, result for Rangers. Be, see, at the end of the day, see if you win seven games 1 0, you don't give a toss, do you? So it's, you it's, it's the league. Um, so, those uh, conditions could change the way the game is. And also, you don't want to risk injuries as well. So if you can get yeah. a couple of goals, then you might want to... What do you do if you get a couple of goals? you try and get more goals to, to get the extra point or, uh, with the goal plus? I think or do you protect the players? I think you protect the players if, if it's bad. I mean, I mean conditions, I mean if it's really bad. Yeah. Uh, so, who knows? I, I think Rangers will win. I think, I, think, I think the game will go ahead, in all honesty. And I think it'll be, I think it'll be quite comfortable for Rangers 2 or 3. And then we get the same against Ross County again, two or three again against Ross County, and then we finish the split strongly. Uh, you know, Celtic get at home at St Mon on Saturday. You've got to imagine that be three points for them. However, St Mon have given them a game at Parkhead a couple of times in the last couple of years, so you never know with that. Uh, the first, I, I really genuinely think the first team we punt loses it. 
or the, the first team to blink loses it because it, it could be it could come down to that uh, as, as bottle's going to be a big thing for it now one thing one problem with that is Celtic have won the treble last season so whether we like them or no we don't obviously they're the champions they've got experience of winning it yeah. and that might be the difference have your guys right. got the bottle well I it won't, be too so. it won't be too long till we find out uh, but every confidence in them of course uh, good news for all you viewers next week uh, I'm out of the country next week for a week so uh, you'll have a combination of Sai, Sandra, Viv, Ryan maybe uh, Stuart yeah. again helping out which would be great so uh, maybe do a show well actually but probably we'll be on probably the weekend again would you? Would you imagine? Sorry? I will try. Well, I'll, I'll be in Northern Ireland. I'm going to Port Rush for the All weekend. Right, but I'll, I'll be doing a wee uh, pre match if the game goes ahead with Ryan and Dundee. If you're there as well, we can do it. And right. if, if it doesn't go ahead, we can just moan about Scottish football. That'll be a nice change. <laughs> a nice change it just gives us something one. to go away. But so, it's been a whirlwind uh, the last couple of days. Uh, yeah. It's been absolutely crazy. The game, you know, the tail of two halves. The league's still up for grabs. We're no further forward. Uh, We've got a couple of games to get a couple of goals and, and see what happens. But we're still standing. We're still standing, yep. Yeah. So thanks very much for coming tonight, everyone. Uh, we will be back at 8 o'clock. Next week. 8 o'clock for the next couple of weeks. going to be the new time. And as well as that, if you're watching the football tonight anywhere, enjoy your match. Yeah, and always remember, we, we are, are the people. Outro.